Now, Cape Town and surrounding areas may have received some welcome rain over the last few weeks, but in Sutherland, in the Northern Cape, the crippling drought continues. Relief organizations, the gift of the givers, has been working in the town for a month now, drilling boreholes. Joining me now for an update is Gift of the Givers founder, Imtia Suleiman. Thank you so much for joining us. Give us an update on the weather conditions and the, and the outlook in this area of South Africa. Sutherland was cold and gloomy mm. from a weather point of view. Yeah, because isn't Sutherland often the coldest place in South Africa in the winter? Yes, today, today actually too. It's supposed to be minus three, the coldest place in South Africa once again. But it hasn't come along with rain this winter, has no. it? No. Well, it's not only this winter. To, according to the people of Sutherland, we were there last week. We've been there for the last few weeks. But last week they told me for the last four years it has been very, very bad. And now in this year they regard it as the worst drought in more than 100 years of being in the area. I met old people who said we've lived here many, many years. We've had problems in the past and they gave me two dates, once in the 1930s and once in the 70s. And they said it has never been as bad as it is now. And when you go to the area, people try to be happy, they try to be chirpy, but you know the face is masking something deeper inside. Mm -hmm. You can see, just from the facts, there were 200 boreholes, none of them are functional because the table of water table has dropped substantially due to no rain. Mm -hmm. Then they had roughly four to 500,000 sheep. There's only 125,000 left. Most of them had to be sold, and many of them died. Mm. And then because of that, the economy was affected, which means they had to put off farm laborers that were working for them for years. And as much as they didn't, they didn't want to do that, they had no choice because they couldn't pay them. They can't pay their accounts in the shops. They can't, sell, can't pay their accounts in the co-ops. Last year, there were 100, there's 153 farmers. Last year, 11 of them lost their farms. 56 of them are about to lose their farms now. One may lose his farm in the next week. And that is bound to have an impact on um, the broader economy in South Africa, especially the food economy. Yes, you know, food economy and also the, uh, so social life. People living on those farms, those farm workers, if they don't get paid, what happens? Mm -hmm. Nobody can buy. So there's a knock-on effect. Mm -hmm. The good thing is, of course, yes, some tourists have been coming in now in this part of the year. But it's very m minuscule compared to what has to be done there. Now the, now, the Northern Cape is uh, always, you learn in school, Northern Cape in the arid Northern Cape region. So water has always been a scarcity now. But this seems to have just pushed them over the edge. Yes, as I said, you know, they managed all these years, they were fine. They said every year, the, what they say is, all the rain mustn't come one time. It must come in batches, so it, you have a better yield of the, of the, mm. of the ground, you know, of the, of the fodder and, and, and the eating facility. They don't want all the rain one time. And they said, look, the average rainfall was fine over the last so many years. But the last four years, four years ago, it was not too good. But they managed, and same like three years ago. But they said, this year has been a total disaster. And the sheep population speaks for itself. Last year, after the fires in Naizana, when we were involved there, and strangely enough, Naizana was also in drought. And they said, that's the reason why the fire spread so fast. Mm. And after that, some people came and said, look, we need fodder for the animals in Naizana. And soon after that, we started getting calls from Sutherland, parts of the Northern Cape, Aberdeen, Southern Cape, and many areas saying, look, the sheep are in crisis. And we didn't really know. And we moved 383 trucks of fodder and, six, and four train loads, which was 160 carriages. There's a 48.8 million rand worth of fodder. We moved to all the areas. And we thought it's fine. Nobody said anything after that. January and February, I know they got some aid from the government, and everybody was keeping quiet. By the end of May, we started getting messages it's crisis, it's crisis, it's crisis. Mm. And they were too shy to speak directly. So messages were coming because they're very, you know... Why, why would people feel shy to ask? It's just the nature. It, it, it feels, you know, the African farmer feels he can't ask for a handout kind of thing. You know, it's I dignity. I mean, it's what many people don't like Absolutely. to ask. If you go to a lot of areas throughout the world, people would rather die of starvation in the mm. house than put their hand out. And it is your duty to go and find those kind of people. You know, that's the religious teaching saying that. The religious teaching says a lot of people won't ask. You need to find them out. Now, now, Gift to the Givers, obviously, everybody knows Gift to the Givers, world-renowned relief organization. I mean, that's what you, 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 you say it in one breath. But this, for me, from all the projects that I know you've been involved in, this sounds like a very different relief project than you've ever compared to anything you've ever been involved with. Well, did that make it difficult to figure out just how to go about bringing relief to these people? No. You know, it, we are disaster. We, we specialize in disaster. Our job is to think on our feet. We have to find ways in human disaster situations, in the most crazy things that happen. And when you extend that, if it's an animal, but the animal is dying, it's affecting the farmer. It's affecting human also. You know, so it's easy to apply. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people to call upon. All right, I don't know anything about sheep. 
I don't know about cattle. I don't know what kind of fodder they're going to eat. To me, I just, it's grass. They're eating grass. Yes. They say, no, it's no such thing. There's different types of things that go into different types of animals. So you need to get the, the, the right, right kind of advice yes. and expertise yes. so that you could give the right kind of help. Yes, and, and, and people sourced it for us. Because, I mean, they've been using it all the years. Yes. I don't say invent the wheel. Ask them, what do you use normally? They oh. say, oh, we use this. So I said, okay, where do I get it from? The fortunate thing is, we didn't pay for much of the stuff because a lot of farmers in the country were very generous. They said, look, the farmers in Sutherland don't have the fuel or the money to take to go and fetch the, the because they just don't have any more money mm. to go and collect the free the free bales. And other farmers said, look, it's too expensive for us to transport it, but we can give you the bales for free. So we used our own trucks. We actually bought three trucks specially for this purpose. Wow. So two super links and one flatbed. And then we also hired other transport to move bigger loads. And, and, is, and is this now an ongoing yes. um, process with those trucks driving up and down yes. delivering? But now it's there's something more frightening. The last three days we got calls from Muscle Bay and a farmer came on the phone and sobbing, saying nobody knows about us. Every day we go to the field, we pick up dead sheep. A few hours later we got a call from Lanesburg. You know, same story. I've got my hydrologist on his way to Lanesburg yesterday and he's going to Muscle Bay today. Mm -hmm. It seems we've got a crisis there. Now, you said uh, uh, the farmer called you and said nobody knows about us. Yeah. Now, um, uh, the, the drought in Cape Town obviously received massive coverage from the media. Just normal people knew what was going on there because probably uh, it's, it's an urban center that everybody uh, feels comfortable talking about it. They know where it is, they've visited there, or they know people there. Uh, do you think a part of the problem here here is the fact that uh, not enough of a spotlight has been put on what you believe is a massive crisis. Yes, it has been neg neglected by everyone because people are focusing on Cape Town Central mm. because the tourists are coming, business is going to be affected, the hotels must run but enough water, the shopping centers must get water. But if you go in Cape Town itself, go to the schools, you will find a lot of schools don't have water in Cape Town. And we thought maybe they're lying to us. No, we said maybe people are just playing games because they want bottled water, because gift of the givers is giving free bottled water. So everybody said, let's take something. So my teams went on unex un unex you know, un uh, expected visits. They went there, I'm uh, sorry, unannounced visits. They went there, they said, you know what, I just need to wash my hands. Went to the bathroom, sludge was coming out of the taps. What? And the principal said, but this is happening for several days, it's not, nothing new. And when we started getting calls from old age homes, and you know, people for physically and mentally challenged, you realize the water crisis, I'm talking before the rains came now, there's a major crisis. One of the ho homes, somebody happened to be there, one of my staff members, and the lady asked the nurse, can I have water for my tablet, for my medication? The nurse I'm said, you used, you used your quota up already. <gasps> so we happened to have a whole pucky load of water, and he took it off and he said, drink your water from here. And the so next you don't day think about those small things that the yes. water crisis affects. Now, uh, we, need to, we need to wrap. If people are watching and they want to get involved, um, uh, what can they do? We need fodder, number one. We need support for the balls. We're drilling 200 balls in Sutherland. It's a very expensive project, mm -hmm. but now it looks like we'll have to drill in other places too. So if we can get free transport, fodder, you know what kind of fodder, the people who know this know what mm -hmm. kind of fodder, and of course cash support. And the cash support can come, they can call our toll-free line, 0800-786-911, or visit our website, www.giftofthegivers.org, or visit our Facebook page, because every day you can see what's going on on the Facebook page. It's live, what we're doing all the time. So we need animal support. Also, we're supporting the people with clothes, blankets, you know, food and all that kind of stuff. But priority to save those areas. It's fodder and money for balls. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there for now. Always a pleasure speaking to you. The founder of Gift to the Givers, Imtia Suleiman, giving us the very latest on what sounds like a growing crisis in the farming industry, especially down in the Northern Cape. Come